All right, hi everyone. Today we're gonna quickly go through the health risks of different types of fats that are found in our diet. You know, fats are often um, in the media around diet. You know, you can have a high fat diet. There's the um, no carb, high fat, kind of high protein approach. And so there's lots of uh, different kind of methodologies and ways for people to gain uh, what they want for their diet, whether it's a health or physique benefit. Uh, and fats are often right in there, kind of mixed in as either being good or bad, which are kind of general generic terms. Uh, but in reality, things are much more complex with nutrition. And we're going to kind of quickly go through uh, what does the data say around the health effects of different types of fats. So in general, in our diets, there's four main types of fats that we might have the opportunity to ingest. Uh, the trans fats, uh, you might remember, are not naturally occurring. They have the um, double bond, so they are unsaturated, but the hydrogens going on either side of the double bonded carbons, that causes the trans fats to kind of straighten out, allowing them to be solid at room temperature, even though they are unsaturated. Uh, this was a real, I guess, benefit in terms of food manufacturing because it's much easier to store and transport solids over uh, liquids. Also trans fats uh, lasted long, last longer than other uh, fat sources like the saturated or the unsaturated fats. So uh, they were really good for the food processing industry because they lasted longer, they were easier to transport, and um, they were cheap to make. And so trans fats uh, for a while were really popular and common within the um, diets of Americans. The saturated fats are the ones that are fully hydrogenated. They have all the hydrogens that any carbon could have. They are uh, solid at room temperature because of that straight chain uh, fatty acid. They can really tightly pack together. Uh, the saturated fats typically are found in animal food sources, although not always. So you're gonna find them in dairies and in um, uh, red meats, etc. Although there are some saturated fats that are found from plant sources, for example, uh, coconut is a saturated, coconut oil is a saturated fat. Then you have the unsaturated, and the unsaturated fats, remember, have a double bond between their carbons in the fatty acid backbone. Uh, if they have one double bond, it's called a monounsaturated, and if they have multiple, it's called polyunsaturated. And in naturally occurring unsaturated fats, these are gonna be cis unsaturated, meaning the hydrogens are on the same side of the double bond within the fatty acid backbone. So the monounsaturated fats often are found in um, things like seeds and um, avocados, which I love, and polyunsaturated, uh, like uh, you may have heard of omega-3, that's a polyunsaturated fat. Also, you're gonna find them in really fatty fishes like the um, salmons and also, also different types of seeds, sunflower seeds. Uh, soybean, etc. So each of these four different types of fats, even though they're all um, fats, they're all going to be um, part of triglyceride molecules, they have actually very different uh, health effects. So let's start with looking at the trans fats. If we look at this graph for the trans fats, we can see that the red line goes up the y-axis. So anything that goes up uh, up from the horizontal on the y-axis is gonna cause an increased percent risk of mortality, so a higher chance of dying. So because that red line is going up, it's telling us that if you eat uh, diet high in trans fats, you have a higher opportunity, I, I guess not opportunity, you have a higher risk of dying. These are all correlational studies. A correlation does not mean causation, but it is a strong correlation that the more trans fats you eat, the higher risk there is of uh, mortality. And in fact, it's a really kind of steep curve or steep uh, slope there of that line. So you can kind of see it doesn't take much trans fat to have a really big impact on your mortality risk. 
The saturated fats, on the other hand, they, well, they also have a higher risk of mortality, but the slope of that line isn't as high, which means you can eat more of these saturated fats and have a, um, relative to trans fat, a lower risk of mortality. And so for a long time, the saturated fats were thought to be the cause of a lot of coronary heart disease, et cetera. But it turns out that they probably weren't having the biggest impact. It was probably the trans fats that were uh, most bad for people. Um, now looking at the monounsaturated and polyunsaturated, both of those lines go down from the horizontal on the Y axis. So because they're going down, it actually means that the more you eat of these, the lower your chance of mortality. So this kind of goes um, contrary to what a lot of people thought uh, in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, uh, where people were like thinking that all fat was bad and people were prop proponents of a, a no fat diet and all kinds of marketing went into creating products that were no fat this and no fat that. But it turns out it's not just the presence of fat, it's the type of fat you're eating. And so things that have the monounsaturated fats they actually decrease your mortality. Same with the polyunsaturated. In fact, with the polyunsaturated, the more you eat, the better for you it is. The higher or like higher risk of lower mortality. I, I that's a kind of weird way to say it, but I guess the total overall lower mortality risk you face. So things like a diet that's high in salmons or uh, avocados and seeds and nuts are going to actually uh, correlate to a lower risk of mortality. So um, trans fats, as we saw in this uh, graph, the previous graph, what they um, clearly are very bad for health. They are uh, not found in nature. They were kind of invented through a chemical process in the 1890s, uh, which then got patented and um, processed. And pretty soon, within about 30 years of their invention, they started becoming really prevalent within the uh, American diet. Uh, something called margarine started to take the place of butter. It was cheaper than butter. And like I said, it was uh, easy to store and um, did not go rancid. In 1956 is when we had our first scientific kind of paper that was published showing that, you know what, maybe these things aren't that great for us. But um, that didn't matter because people still started using them, still used them extensively. And in fact, um, in the 1980s, the saturated fats were blamed for all of the health effects that were being seen in high fat, uh, saturated and trans fat diets. And so because of saturated fats being blamed, a lot of uh, food processing actually shifted towards trans fats. So baking um, goods and frying of goods and uh, processed food was switched over to trans fats in the 1980s. And by the 1990s, we're having 20,000 deaths, probably at least, probably much higher than that, annually because of the trans fats in the diets. By the early 2000s, we're starting to get some regulation for the trans fats. Uh, the trans fats needed to be placed on the label, but that was when the law was uh, proposed. But look how long it took. It took five years before it actually made it onto the nutrition label. Believe it or not, there's huge kind of industry um, uh, advocacy around what goes on food labels and what we should tell consumers versus not tell consumers is in the foods. And so it took five years of uh, essentially bickering back and forth before the trans fats were allowed to go onto the uh, nutritional labels. And, and they're there now, you, you've probably seen them there. One tricky thing about the trans fats on the nutritional labels is it will say zero trans fats per serving, but that actually, that zero is a rounded zero. So it could have up to 0.5 of a gram, a half a gram of trans fat, fat per serving, and the label will say zero. And we all know that serving sizes are oftentimes not representative of what people actually eat. 
you know, in one, if you sit down and you have a um, box of donuts or whatever, you, the serving might be a half a donut, but people are sitting down and eating two or three. They're actually getting multiple servings, which means they are actually eating lots of trans fats, even though the label says zero. In 2013, then, the Food and Drug Administration finally kind of made the declaration that trans fats are generally not going to be safe for human health. But it wasn't until 2018, so pretty relatively recently, that uh, the foods will not have trans fat um, uh, declaration was made. Now, that said, it still has, they can still have up to 0.5 grams per serving and still have it count as zero. So it's, it's not fully out of the diet yet. Okay. There's um, a le reading there that you can click to uh, get the information here, but also we've addressed uh, these questions for trans fats and saturated fats uh, as we've gone through this slide deck today. So to summarize, um, I think the answer to this question is um, no, not all fats are bad. In fact, some are necessary and required for health and well-being, and you need uh, healthy fats in your diets. And if you have an opportunity for choice, then you're going to want to choose foods that have more unsaturated fats than saturated fats. But a little bit of saturated fat is not going to be um, too too bad for your health. It's uh, the trans fats that are probably the, the thing to look out for and try to avoid um, uh, if you can. All right. Have a great day.